Hi everyone, um, I've always been interested in design in general, even before flying paragliders. And some time ago, me and Gemma made a video trying to do some paper paragliders. And that kind of revived the interest a bit. And, and then I went to see Hannes Papish's talk on paraglider design. And these guys were building paragliders out of their backyards, kind of like 20, 30 years ago. So that made me think, surely we can do it today. So this is the first episode of a new series we've just come up with about designing and building a paraglider. I don't know how far we're going to get or what's going to happen, but you know, you've got to start somewhere. So I thought that on this video we'll stick to paper to explain the simple difficulty with paragliders, which is how to bend a flat sheet to have two curvatures. You know, you can bend it like this and have that curvature and you can bend it like this, but when you bend it one way, you lose the other. You can't really do both. It just doesn't work. And that's why paragliders are so complex because they kind of have that shape in profile and that shape front on. So, I've got a plan. So to get around that problem, paragliders are made of cells or sections. So the first thing I thought is do a load of those. But if you do a load of rectangles and just glue them next to each other, you just end up back where you started. So with a few of those glued together, you end up like this. However, if you change the shape of the sides, something else might happen. So I was just playing with the idea of starting with a rectangle and putting some curves to the sides. In fact, went the same route as Hannes, I found a plate, some round stuff that I had around the house, put it there, trace it, and now I have a cell. So what happens when you try to connect a cell with a bend to another cell with a bend? Well, so what I did is to draw a few of these, and also a, a safety margin, if you will, so that I could, because if you're trying to join this line with another line, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work. How do, you, how do you connect two pieces of paper end on end? So you need some margin. And also, because that margin is there, you, on paper at least, you can't really bend it around the corner. So I made some marks and I've cut these out. And what happens with this particular geometry is you get this. So it's bending this way, so you have a curvature that way. And it's bending this way, so you have that shape. But the arc that this um, kind of shape has in that sense is to do with the radius of this side. So, naturally, the next experiment was a similar one. But in this case, it's a much bigger radius, meaning it's closer to a straight line than this one. So when I did that, what happened was this guy. So it, it's a bigger radius here, still a bit too big, but it kind of like, it's a bit neater. So after that one, I did another one where it's even shallower. Basically that I went from this to this, to this, which is a lot bigger. Well, you can see them all here. From that, to that, to that one, which is a little bit better. It opens up a bit more. This is more like a ball. This is starting to open up and be a little bit more like a paraglider. And then when it got to this point, it started to be obvious that ideally you want to make this radius really big so it's quite close to a straight line and you want to do more cells rather than less. So instead of having something really chunky and bulky which is like pam, 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 you have this which the more sides you have the better it approximates to a curve which is what we want on a smooth curve there. So the bigger the radius the, hardest, the, the harder these are to draw accurately 
and these need to be drawn really accurately and cut and bent really accurately. The because otherwise you're just going to make a straight line and you're going to end up making a flat shape if you're not careful. So for that, I actually changed to designing on the computer. I just opened a file in Illustrator and drew some lines. And I was also wondering, because it kind of has a nose in the front and a nose in the back, I was wondering if I could put a radius around the front but then make it straight edged in the back so you end up with this. So if you look at these guys this is an even bigger radius than what I had before and then from about here onwards is just a straight line and I've noticed and, and my thinking as well was that this distance across the front if it's the same distance as it is across the back it might give you similar sized radii at those two points if you look at it from the front and back but I'm not sure about that but that's something to test so the computer really helped in basically drawing one and then copy pasting and then printing this on a printer which made it a lot easier and this is the little guy that came out it has a has a, a rounded nose but because it has that straight edge section it has kind of like a paragraph has a paraglidery back to it. It's still, I still think it's obviously the aspect ratio is too chunky, uh, but I was really pleased with this one. It actually looks cool. And obviously I just, uh, I just connect those tabs, those seam, the seam allowances, I just connect them on the inside to, uh, to make the shape. So after that, this curvature was so close to the line that is kind of hard to make on this side. So really making it bigger would make it just easier to make. So I made this guy. So this guy is like this guy, but scaled up, but where that radius is even, even bigger than that. So that's even closer to a rectangle. So I made a bunch of those and this is what came out. Look at that. It should be a little bit tighter. But, you know, that actually looks like a paraglider. This is actually really exciting. So after this, I wanted to explore a couple more ideas. We're basically getting a, re a rectangle and making it fat, so we're making it concave. But what happens if we make it convex? Will it make the profile, instead of being like this, will it make it go up? So I just did a quick little experiment by hand where it comes out there but then it goes in on the back and that's exactly what happens it's kind of like reflex i suppose if you look at it from a profile perspective where it still has a nose and it still has that that arch but then when you go to the back it kind of arches the other way so i thought this was really interesting you know obviously quite a backwards way to go about finding what each curve does, but it's, I don't know, just find it really interesting, really accessible with paper as well. And then the last thing I thought about for this video is all of these cells are the same, but really when you look at a paraglider, there's lots of, um, there's lots of different designs. You could have a paraglider that is a constant arc, or you could have one that is kind of flat on the top and the wingtips come in. And I thought, how, how would you do that? Does that mean that instead of having cells that are always the same, uh, if you wanted to do something different, for instance, you could have, you know, very high radius rectangles in the middle to make it flatter, smoother arc. And then if you want to bring the wingtips in, you can put some smaller radius rectangles on the ends, which make it curve more. So I got so I got some of these guys, which were smaller radius than these, and scaled them up to this size, so that this line length is roughly the same as this line length, because it's the edges that you need to make them meet. And basically, came up with this little hybrid. Obviously color-coded so we can keep track of what it's doing. But look, it does do that. It's flatter in the middle, and it comes in more at the wingtips.
I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I just get really excited by this stuff. It's, it's just really cool to, to, to explore these principles just one at a time, like one little variable, and try to understand what it does and then go on to the next. So, there are some things to do with the construction of these that are specific to paper. So, for instance, I'm having to cut these little triangles out so that I can bend along the line. If it was cloth, maybe I wouldn't need to do that. I can just sew along the line and that would work, I don't know. So on the next video, I'd like to see how some of these things might translate to cloth, but that are not the same as paper because paper is a little bit more rigid and it rips easily and it doesn't give in the same way as cloth. So, hope you enjoyed it. It's just a little exploration of what I've been up to uh, for the last few days. Uh, I find it really interesting. If you have some more ideas, I have, I have more ideas like how to make the back flat and make them, make them slowly vary with, uh, along the span to make a neater one. Uh, and instead of having a, f a flat front, you can make it curved like a real paraglider. But I just wanted to keep it really simple to start with and just try to put one variable at a time so that each cut on each panel you understand where it's coming from or I understand where it's coming from. Anyway, I'd love to take this series all the way to designing and building a real paraglider that can actually be flown even though that might be on uh, episode 10 or 20 but uh, little by little just uh, doing the research and putting in the work to figuring these things out. Anyway, I'm not sure when the next video about this topic will come in. I'll just intercut it with other videos if we need to. Or they'll just come up whenever they're ready because it's like a different kind of project. Uh, and as always, I want to thank all these lovely people on Patreon for supporting the channel. You can get some sweet merch on our shop, which is a link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye.